All right, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I wanted to continue a bit with Python on DataCamp, partly because that was requested for me. Uh, I just want to say I have actually stopped with RenPy and I have switched over to Godot. Uh, RenPy uses a version of Python and Godot uses GDScript, which is based on Python. So they're both um, related to the code for Python. And after I finish Python on DataCamp, I want to continue with DataCamp. But I guess these skill tracks, well, we'll see what, what's available. All right, I'm going to go to keep making progress. Okay, so this is where we left off familiar functions. All right, so this is a basic introduction to functions. There's built-in functions, which we've used print, type, string, int, bool, and float. And so one thing that they're showing as an example, result equals type of 3.0. So that means it's going to check the type of 3.0 and store that type in the variable called result. The, okay, what they have, the general recipe for calling functions and saving the result to a variable is to have your variable equals the function name and then open parentheses what it is that you're trying to uh, call the function on and then close parentheses. I am not articulate enough to go into an explanation, but I don't know. This is the best introduction to functions. So I don't think it would have worked for me. We are meant to use print and type, the print function and the type function, to print out the type of var1. So I will start with that. It says uh, print out type of var1. So if I do print type var1. So the idea is var1, this array of 1, 2, 3, 4, is going to be sent to the type function. The type function has a return value, which is now inside these parentheses for print. And then print is going to print out whatever that return value is. Now we want to print out the length of var1. So length, we see, is len to get the length. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to print length of var1. And then we're going to convert var2 to the integer out2. So we're going to have a new variable called out2. And that is an int of var2. All right, so let's say run code. What do we get? All right, here's... Have I done something wrong? Because it only has one... Oh, it's printing the type of var1 is... The type is class list. So it's a list type. And then the length of var1 is 4. So I should be able to submit, and it should be correct. Great job. The length len function is extremely useful. It also works on strings to count the number of characters. Yes. Okay. Okay, so this is saying if you use the help function, you can get information about another function. So you can do help max 
or in IPython, you can do question mark max and it will open the documentation. Okay, so it wants us to get information about complex. So we're gonna do help complex if I do enter. Okay, we have the doc file for complex. So we're supposed to find which of these statements is true. All of these statements have to do with the arguments which we can see on this line. Complex takes two arguments, real, and then in brackets it has image. The brackets mean it's optional. So you have two arguments, real and image. Real is required, image is optional. So we know that this first one is wrong because it's not saying image, it's putting the entire brackets and comma. Those are not part of the variable name. Those are just symbols to show us that this is optional. The next one says that they're both required. They are not both required. And then the last one says if you don't specify image, it is set to 1 by Python. However, the documentation says this is equivalent to some formula where image defaults to 0. So the only one that could be right is this third one. Perfect. Okay, this wants us to look at the documentation for sorted. So I'll bring that up. So one thing I don't understand, we have sorted, we have the iterable. So the iterable is the list or array or whatever that you want sorted. Then we have a slash and an asterisk. asterisk. And then we have a variable called key and a variable called reversible, which I can talk about those in a minute. The part that confuses me is the slash and the asterisk. It's because it makes no sense. I've never seen symbols in the arguments list, so I don't know what those mean. Where it says key equals none means that if you don't specify the key argument, it will be none. So that's what the equals is only if key is not specified. So it's optional, but it's got a default value if you don't if you don't include it. And then the same is true for reverse. Reverse is optional. You only need to put a value here if you have to have it be true. Okay, so our goal for this project is to pass in an iterable and to have reverse be true and to not deal with the key or whatever these symbols are. So they've created two variables. We're going to paste together first and second to be full. So I need to create a variable called full. And is this just first plus second? This has been a while since I've done this. Yeah, it says use plus to merge first and second. First plus second. Okay, so now it wants us to have a variable called full sorted. And that is equal to sorted, the iterable is full, and then we're going to specify reverse. I still like to use spaces. And it's true, so I think that means capital T, 
and then we're going to print out full sorted. So we're going to do print full sorted. So if I run the code, we have this. And so as you can see, that's first and second sorted. So I'm going to submit. All right, it looks like we're done with functions and we're going on to methods. So if that's the case, I'm going to stop here and then I'll return next time to continue with methods.